صلى الله عليه وسلم is a belief in al malaikatu wal qadar the belief in the angels and the belief in the qadar the belief in the angels and the belief in the qadar and we heard a number of texts about the malaika and we left off with the narration of al barra ibn azib about the questioning in the grave the time of death and the hadith is found in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed and is found in the Sunan of Abu Dawood and elsewhere and it is authentic from the Prophet Sallallahu and the angel outlined for us or the hadith rather outlined for us something about the angels and how from the angels is the angel of death and there are malaika of rahma, angels of mercy, and malaika of adab, and angels of torment. We continue. The Shaykh Zaidi says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, this hadith is collected by Ahmed and Abu Dawood. He says, and by Anasai ibn Umajah, and he, in a uh, context similar to what we heard Qutu He says I say يَنْبَغِي لِلْمُسْلِمْ أَنْ يَتَعَلَّمَ هَذَا الْحَدِيثَ الْجَلِيلِ وَيَسْتَحْضِرَهُ فِي كُلِّ وَقْتِ وَحِينٍ It is befitting for the Muslim to learn this hadith that is jaleel this hadith that is great and tremendous and important وَيَسْتَحْضِرَهُ and that he is able to bring it to memory I recollect the hadith. And this is something that we find even with long hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and some of the longer hadith of the Prophet ﷺ pertaining the affairs of the hereafter, such as this hadith and others. And that it was reported from the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and he, in a way that would show you that they mention this hadith amongst themselves very frequently or in some cases that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would mention some of these longer ahadith about the events of the day of judgment or the different stages that people go through in the hereafter and he would mention them quite frequently he would mention them quite frequently so the shaykh he says that a person should be able to recollect this hadith at all times لَعَلَّهُ So that perhaps he could يَعِدُّ لِسُؤَالِ جَوَابًا So perhaps he could prepare an answer for the questions of the grave وَيَحْسَبُ لِتَلْكَ الْفِتْنَةِ حِسَابًا So that perhaps he can prepare himself to be accountable for that reckoning he says, وَمِنْهُمْ الْمُوْكَالُونَ بِحِفْظِ الْعَبْدِ فِي كُلِّ حَالْ مِنْ أَحْوَالِهِ He says, beyond what is mentioned so far, and so far we mentioned the angel that is entrusted with the revelation, who is Jibreel. And the revelation, the scholars, they say, is the cause of the life of the heart. And we mentioned the angel that is in charge of the life of the earth, which the source of it is rain, water, and vegetation. Who is the angel Mikael, alayhi salam? And we mention the angel that is Sahib al-Sur. He is entrusted with the blowing of the horn for the beginning of the day of judgment, for the faza and the saiq and al baath wa nushur, and he the blowing of the horn that will cause the people to fall into a state of terror and fall unconscious. And then when it is blown again, they will emerge from their graves. And that is the life of the hereafter. So the three greatest angels that we know, they are in charge of various aspects of life. And he's the life of the heart, by way of revelation, the life of the 
planet that we live on by way of water and vegetation and the life of the hereafter which comes about by the people emerging from their graves and we heard about just now the angel of death the angel of death and he, that they're responsible for and he taking the soul of the person and bringing him to the mercy of Allah or the punishment of Allah wa ta'ala respectively another hadith that shows us that mentions the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment can somebody give me a hadith And the man who killed 99 persons. The man who killed 99 persons. Technically, he killed how many? 100, right? And he killed 99. And then an ignorant monk told him that there is no toba for him. So, in a hopeless condition, he killed the monk. And he met a scholar. And he said, What would interfere between you and toba? He said, there is a land where the people, they worship Allah Taala alone. Go to them and worship Allah with them. And never return back to your land because it is an evil land. So he went to them and along the way while he was commencing his journey. And he, the angel of death came to take his soul. He died. And we know that the angels of mercy and the angels of adab, of torment, that they disputed over who should take his soul. And so they measured the distance between the place he had left and the place where he was going to be with the believers and Allah wa ta'ala caused the earth to constrict itself so that he would be closer to the believers and the disbelievers and criminals that he had uh, found himself amongst where he committed his crimes and so the hadith likewise it shows us and he, the existence of the angels of Rahmah and the angels of Adab and the angels of torment that are with the angel of death when he takes the soul. The Shaykh he says, And from them are the angels that are responsible for safeguarding and protecting the person in every situation. As Allah Ta'ala said, that he, meaning each human being, has mu'aqibat, has angels that alternate in shifts. What are the two times that they alternate? Fajr and, and Asr. Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Asr. That they alternate and they protect him by the Amr of Allah. They protect him. I mean, Amr Allah, they protect him. And he out of the command of Allah wa ta'ala because of the command of Allah, that's why they protect him. Then Allah wa ta'ala said, In Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. This is one of countless examples that we can mention about how affairs of belief are directly connected to action. Yesterday we heard we discussed and he, how the reminder of death is something that causes a person to develop good habits. And he, because a person doesn't know when they are going to die. And the belief that the believer has about Allah and about the hereafter, preparing for the hereafter. And he drives him to righteous deeds. Here we have an uh, ayah about the malaik, about the angels. We just heard a hadith about the angels of torment and the angels of punishment. And in how they disputed over a man who had been a criminal. And he was going to be with the believers. And the hadith shows us, along with the belief in the angels, a number of things that are connected to action. And he, from that, the statement of the scholar, never go back to your land because it is an evil land. And he, that your surroundings have an effect upon you. Your surroundings, and in bi'atul saliha, and he having a good environment, and he has a positive effect upon you, and having a bad environment may cause a negative effect upon you. And he likewise, and he, we see the importance of being with the believers in general. And he, that the cause of the angels of mercy, having mercy upon him, was that he died upon and he, a good intention, which was to be with the believers, which is to be with the believers. Here, 
and we see that the behavior of a person is connected directly to how much a person is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said that He has for him muaqibat, guardian angels that alternate in shifts in front of him and behind him. Yahfadunahu min amrillah. They protect him out of the order of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah does not change the condition of a people till they change what is in themselves. So if they want more protection, they should be more obedient. Safeguard Allah's religion and Allah will safeguard you. And we heard in our class on Thursday a principle, a tremendous principle in the religion. Al Hukmu Yaduru Ma'ilatihi Wujudda Wujudan wa Adman wa Kuwatan wa Dafan. And he that a ruling, and in this case, reward or punishment is connected for the reason of the ruling. Its presence according to his presence, its absence, its strength or its weakness. And so if a person and he doesn't safeguard Allah's religion at all, and he has no concern at all, is mu'rid an deen has apathy about the religion, has no concern and he, at all about his religion, and he is deserving of Allah entirely removing his protection from him. Right? And this is the case of the dhalim, of the oppressive person, the person who and he wrongs himself by making shirk with Allah ta'ala or disbelieving in Allah, or who wrongs the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah la yumli la dhalim hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflithu. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the hadith in an adab and mufrad, authentic from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that Allah yumli, inna Allah la yumli la dhalim. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delays the dhalim and he punishing the oppressor. And he up until the point that when he finally seizes him with punishment, he will not be able to escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe the very next hadith in an adab al-mufra, the Prophet wasallam, or very close to that same hadith, authentic from the Prophet wasallam, he said, Wallahi, law bagha jabalun ala jabalin la ju'ila al-baghiyu min humma dakka. Wallahi, if a mountain was to transgress against another mountain, Allah in retaliation would change the oppressive mountain. He would turn it into dakka and he would pound it into rubble, into dust. And so the protection of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the point here is that the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is according to the presence or the absence or the strength or the weakness of how much a person is safeguarding his deen. How much a person is safeguarding his deen. And a person may not be safeguarding their deen at all. And if a person is not safeguarding their deen at all, they're not a Muslim. Right? And he, every person who is a Muslim, to some level, he is safeguarding his deen. He is doing something to hold on to his deen. If he's not holding on to his deen, that is the definition of disbelief. Right? That is the definition of disbelief. And he entirely and he throwing his deen, casting his deen to the side, not holding fast to his deen at all. And so according to the strength or the presence or the absence of the strength of the weakness of his holding on, of his preservation of his deen, is what will predict the strength or the weakness or the presence or the absence of the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, when he holds fast to the religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will safeguard him and any person who finds himself in any situation, any precarious situation, anywhere they feel as though some degree of protection has been removed from them, as though they find themselves vulnerable to something that they had previously not been vulnerable to on any level connected to their health or their safety or anything of the sort, then the first thing they need to look at is how much are they safeguarding their religion? How much are they safeguarding their religion? If they find their marriage in jeopardy, may Allah safeguard our marriages and our families. The first thing they look at is their self and their actions. Right? The Salaf, if they saw a person being abusive to them in speech, they would make istighfar and they say they would say this is because of my sins. They wouldn't retaliate against a person and, and he repay foolish behavior with foolish behavior. And but rather they would make istighfar, they would realize that this is a reminder for them to improve their situation. And so, this is something that needs to be uh, brought to mind.
And he, as a person looks at every matter of belief, and he, what is connected to it of action. As Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in his book, As-Sawa'iq al-Mursala ala al-Jahmiya wa al-Mu'attila, he said, Kullu mas'alatin ilmiya fahiyya ilm, Kullu mas'alatin ilmiya fahiyya amaliyya, wa kullu mas'alatin amaliyyatun fahiyya ilmiyyatun. And he, every matter of that is ilmi in nature, meaning that is a knowledge-based issue, and what he means by that is a matter of belief then it is also an, a matter of action. And every matter of action is also a matter of belief. What that means is that everything that as any, an also, any, any, at, this, at its core, it is a knowledge-based issue that doesn't directly mention something of action, that there is something that is directly connected of action. So every matter of belief and he causes a person, or it should increase a person in his love of Allah, his fear of Allah, his hope in the mercy of Allah, his reliance upon Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on and so forth. We can see that, and he, in the understanding the presence of the, the existence of the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment. A person can only imagine, you know, imagine suddenly, be, suddenly, suddenly being taken your soul suddenly being taken and your life abruptly coming to an end, right? Imagine if somebody ran, somebody just ran into your house and snatched you out of your bed and bound you up and dragged you out of your house. Imagine that. Some human beings did that. Now think about the angels of Allah, the angels of punishment coming and snatching the person up they say they don't leave, right? We heard the hadith yesterday, the angels of mercy, the angels of punishment. They don't leave the soul in the hand of the angel of death for the blinking of an eye, except that they snatch him up and they bind him in the akfan that they have, in the uh, shrouds that they have, either from paradise or from the fire, right? They snatch him up, you know? This is something that, you know, the, the thought of that, in this world where there is possibly some escape from it, right? It's something terrifying enough, but this is something I need, that is the beginning of forever. The beginning of forever for a person. And his belief about that should be a cause of hope or a cause of fear, right? His belief in the existence of the angels of mercy who don't act except by the order of Allah. And the angels of punishment who don't act except by the orders of Allah. It directly has an effect and an impact upon his hope and his fear. What we just mentioned here about belief in the guardian angels that a person has is directly connected to a person's reliance upon Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows that they don't do anything except by the command of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is the one entirely in control of the affair. And they don't disobey Allah. The angels do not disobey Allah pertaining what He commands them, and they do exactly as they are instructed. And so, if He wants to be protected, and he, then He needs to put His reliance upon Allah, and He needs to take the means to protection. And he, just putting your trust upon Allah without doing anything is not tawakkul, it is tawakkul, it is fake tawakkul. It is fake tawakkul, it is a person being delusional. It is a person being delusional. And a person, when they want anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have to take the means to it. This is from the conditions of tawakkul. Tawakkul is that a person, and he has an itimad ala Allah. It's the definition of tawakkul. That they have an itimad ala Allah, that they have dependency upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and bringing about good for them, and in protecting them from harm. While taking the means, and trusting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate the outcome. So they put their dependency upon Allah, they take their means and they trust. So these are really three things. They put their dependency upon Allah, then they take the means that Allah has legislated, have come in the kitab of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet while trusting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate the outcome 
and he, that they were after. And he, this is the reality of a tawakkul. So if a person wants to be protected, and they have to know that there are things beyond what they see, and that there are angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed to the person that were protected by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see so many times throughout the history of Islam, the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu the lives of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu who conquered the earth in decades. And he, some of the tabi'een who were so brave that and he, the, the stories that I mentioned about some of the tabi'een and he, one of the tabi'een, I forget the name of him, it was mentioned by uh, in the book Ta'adim Qadr al-Salat by Al-Marwazi. And he says, one of the tabi'een, and he, he was with the army, and there were a bunch of lions, you know, they, they were in Africa, and there was a bunch of lions at a body of water, and, you know, hyenas and these sorts of things. And, the, you know, the army, they stayed away, and he walked right up to the water. And they said, you know, you're not afraid of these animals. He said that I'm shy of Allah seeing me afraid of anything but Him. I'm shy of Allah seeing me afraid of anything but Him. And you see the level of courage that the scholars have had throughout the generations and in preserving and safeguarding the religion. You hear so many stories. And he just, even in the generation that we live in, and he, stories that were reported authentically about Shaykh Muqbar, rahimahullah ta'ala, all the different times that people tried to assassinate him. There was one man who came to Sheikh Muqbaz in his biography, and he said that he was paid by the communists to assassinate the Sheikh, and he was a sniper. And he said that the Sheikh used to, every day, as is known after Salat al Fajr, he used to exercise. There was a pathway that he used to walk. So he was perched up on a high hill on the side of a mountain and some bushes, waiting for the Sheikh to come across a path. And he said, right at the time that he was waiting for the Sheikh to walk into his crosshairs, a bright light hit his scope. And it, you know, you know, just took away his, blinded him temporarily, you know, took away his ability to see temporarily. So he had to reposition himself. And he said, and he waited. And right before he was about to fire, the same thing happened again. And he re repositioned himself. And after the third time happened, he left. And some years later, he came to the Sheikh and he said, I want to share my story with you. You know, his journey to the truth, so on and so forth. He said, I was paid. And he mentioned people who had hired him, so on and so forth, to kill the Sheikh. And these are the types of things that happen for the believers. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is in control of the situation. If the whole world is to gather against you, they can never gather against you. And he, to do anything except for that which Allah Ta'ala has foreordained of good or harm, right? And so the person, when he understands this, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has appointed guardian angels to him. And Allah Ta'ala is in the one, he is the one who is in control of all affairs. And he then, he looks at what comes right after the verse. And he, in Allah la ma bi qawmin hatta ma bi anfusihim. So if you find yourself mahfud, if you find yourself in a protected condition, safe, you know, happy, prosperous, so on and so forth. That's a great blessing from Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu He said in a hadith in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, he said, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سِرْبِهِ مُعَافًا فِي بَدَلِهِ عِنْدُهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا حِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا بِحَذَا فِي رِهَا Whoever of you wakes up safe in his dwelling, healthy in body, with enough food to eat for the day, then it is like the whole world has been facilitated for him. It's a great blessing of Allah Ta'ala. If you want that to remain for you, then safeguard Allah's religion. Safeguard what Allah has blessed you with. And you hold on to good habits and good practices in your religion. He says, he said, the Mu'aqibat, they are the angels that protect him. And they are in front of him and behind him. And when the order of Allah Ta'ala comes to pass, any for some harm to reach him, then they leave him. Then they leave him. Right? 
either for the time of his death or anything that is less than that of harm. وَمِنْهُمْ الْمُوْكَلُونَ بِحِفْظِ عَمَالَ الْعَبْدِ مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَشَرٍ وَهُمْ الْكِرَامُ الْكَاتِبُونَ الَّذِي الَّذِينَ ذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِقَوْلِهِ وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِذِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ He says, likewise, there are other angels that are entrusted with حِفْذِ عَمَالَ الْعَبْدِ And he's safeguarding, meaning recording the actions of the person, whether those actions are good or evil. And they are الْكِرَامُ الْكَاتِبُونَ They are the noble scribe angels that write down the actions of people. Whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Infitar when he said that indeed over you there are hafidin. Hafidin, and he here, and he, they are recording the uh, memoir of one's actions, and he, what one has done. And he, from the word hifth, which means to memorize and to safeguard and protect and so on and so forth. And over you, there are hafidin, and he, those that are recording the memory of your actions, which you have done. Kiraman katibin, they are noble scribes. And who are writing, يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفَعَلُونَ They know what you are doing. وَبِقَوْلِهِ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَزِيدٌ Likewise in the statement of Allah in Surah Al-Qaf, that the person does not utter a statement except that he has with him رَقِيبٌ عَزِيدٌ He has with him angels that are watching and who are ready, meaning ready to and prepared to write everything that he does. He says in some narrations mentioned that the writers of the good deeds are on the right side and the writers of the bad deeds they are on the left side and he and they write what the person does. Uh, and some narrations they mention that when the person does a good deed, that every good deed that he does is written at least tenfold in his favor. While when he does a bad deed, what happens? What are you going to say? He waits. He waits. For, For what? For six hours. To give him a chance to make istighfar, to give him a chance to seek forgiveness before he writes it. Before he writes it. And Hassan al Basri, he said. It should cause a person sufficient shyness that he knows that even if he makes istighfar and tawbah, that his bad deeds are written and will be pre present on the day of judgment. Unless he did what? Unless he made tawbah and istighfar before the angel wrote. The angel waits for six hours. The angel waits for six hours to give a person time to make tawbah. Qutu. He says, I say, وَهَذَا فَضْلٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَأَحْسَانٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ عَظِيمَةٌ وَهَذَا الْإِنسَانِ حَيْثُ تُكْتَبُ الْحَسَنَاتِ فَوْرًا مُضَعَفًا ثُمَّ يُعْتَى فُرْسَةً زَمَنِيًا بَعْدَ مُقَارَفَةَ السَّيَّئَةَ لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ فَيَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ مَا أَهْلَمَهُ وَأَكْرَمَهُ وَلَا يَهْلِكُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِلَّا حالك. Sheikh Zayd, he says, this is from Allah's bounty and His kindness and His tremendous mercy with this person that His good deeds are immediately written and credited uh, many times beyond what He did. While on the other hand, at the same time, He is given a portion of time after committing a sin to come to His senses and to make istighfar to seek forgiveness of Allah ta'ala. He says, Fa subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is glorified and praised Ma ahlamahu. How great is the hilm, the forbearance of Allah wa akramahu, and how great is the honoring of Allah ta'ala for his servants. And no one is destroyed in front of Allah ta'ala except for a person who is truly destroyed. As comes authentically from the Prophet Sallallahu and he after mentioning and he, how the person uh, who does a good deed, that his good deeds are 
written many times over in the person who does a bad deed, and he, that his bad deeds are only written as one. The Prophet he said, "Wala yahliku ala Allahi illa halik." No one is destroyed in front of Allah Taala except for the halik, except for the person who was truly destroyed. What that means is that with all that we know, that a person who does a good deed, it is credited 10 to 700 fold to many times beyond that. And a person who does a bad deed, it is only credited against him as one bad deed. And if he repents from it, then what? At-ta'ibu min al-dhamb kamman la dhamba lah. The person who repents from his sin is like the person who never did the sin to begin with. And not just that. As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum. But Allah said, أُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exchange the bad deeds people do with good deeds. And the scholars, they have different tafasir, but what is authentic about that verse is found in a targhib a tarheeb of al-hafaz al-mundhir, rahimahullah ta'ala, authentically from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there will be people on the Day of Judgment that when their bad deeds are exchanged for good deeds, meaning that all the evil that they did because they repented and changed their ways, that the amount of evil that they did was credited as good deeds on their behalf, that they will have actually wished that they had had more bad deeds that were switched over. With all that, think about that, with all that, who can really be destroyed in front of Ar-Rahman? Ar-Rahman, the one who is vast in his mercy, on the day of judgment will be ghadban, he will be angry. On a day where he will be angry in a way that he had never been angry before and will never be angry again. All right? And so the affairs like that, we find frequently, when Allah wa ta'ala mentions the events of, day of, of the day of judgment, he mentions his name, Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman. And you to remind the person that Allah is vast in His mercy. And though the events of the Day of Judgment are something terrifying and frightening and so on and so forth, that the person, he should not lose hope of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said in the hadith collected by Muslim in his Sahih, he said, لَوْ عَالِمَ الْكَافِرُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رحمة, That if the kafir knew what Allah has of rahmah, مَا قَنِيتَ مِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ أَحَدٌ That none would lose hope in His mercy. And if the creation knew what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has of punishment, ma tami'a fi jannatihi ahad, then no one would expect to receive His paradise, that He entered into His paradise. And he, the punishment of Allah and the reward of Allah and the mercy of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is something that is alim, is something that is tremendous. He says, وَمِنْهُمَ الْمُوكَلُونَ بِفِتْنَةِ النَّاسِ فِي قُبُورِهِمْ كَمَا مَرَّ بِكَ فِي حَدِيثَ الْبَرَّاءِ بْنِ عَازِبِ He said, likewise, from the angels, outside of those angels that were mentioned, the angel of death and his awan and his helpers, who are the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment. And either are the angels that are entrusted with questioning the person in his grave, which was previously mentioned in the hadith of al-barra'i ibn Azib, hadith reported by or collected by Ahmed and Abu Dawood and Nasai ibn Umajah. وَمِنْهُمْ الْمُوْكَلُونَ بِالنُطْفَةِ فَالرَّحْمِ He said, likewise, from the angels are those that are entrusted with the nutfa in the rahm. Yani, what happens to the sperm in the womb of the woman. كَمَا وَرَدَ فِي حَدِيثِ ibn Mas'ud حَدِيثِ الصَّادِقِ المسدوق. حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو صادق المصدوق ابن مسعود he said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم narrated to us and he is a صادق المصدوق he is a truthful one who is believed he said إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما ثم يكون علاقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مذغة مثل ذلك ثم يبعث الله ملكا فَيُؤْمَرُ بِأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَيُقَالُ لَهُ أُكْتُبْ عَمَلَهُ وَرِزْقَهُ وَأَجَنَهُ وَشَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ That the, 
creation of each and every one of you is gathered and assembled in the womb of his mother for 40 days. And then he is an alaqa for the similar amount of time. And then he is a mudgha for a similar portion of time. An alaqa, and he like a clot of blood. And he is like a mudgha, which is like and he, if you was to chew something up, right? And it's and it's like a morsel that's been chewed. That's what mudra means, right? Something has been chewed, right? For, and you like the size of a morsel. So you have a clot, which is something small, and a morsel, which is a little bigger, right? Like something that you, that's large enough to swallow, like a piece of food, right? For an equivalent amount of time, for another 40 days. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the passage of those 120 days, he sends an angel, كلمات, and the angel is commanded with four things, to record four things. له, it is said, write his actions, and what type of actions he will do, and his sustenance, his provision, Thirdly, his lifespan. So all of this is preordained by Allah wa Taala before the person comes into existence. What he will do during his life is known by Allah and decreed by Allah. Allah is the creator of the person's actions. They are the doers of their actions. They choose the actions that they do and they are responsible for them. And known as a hujjah upon Allah wa Taala. Wa lillahi al baligha wa lau hadakum ajma'in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us thabat. So the person's actions are written by the angel after the passage of that period of time. And his sustenance is written. And his lifespan is written. And whether he is shaqi or sa'id is written. Whether he is a person who is doomed and damned. A person of shaqawa, of misery and damnation. Or whether he is a person of sa'ada, whether he is a person of felicity and salvation is written, whether he is saved or whether he is damned, is written by the angel. So you see how this hadith is directly connected to the belief in the Qadr. This hadith is directly connected to the belief in the Qadr. In general, the hadith about the Malaika are like that. If you think about it, right? And the Malaika, they are entrusted with any certain task in the universe, right? And they are preordained by Allah Taala to carry out the ordainments of Allah. The malaika, they are. It is divulged to them on a yearly basis what will happen for the next year, right? Allah Taala wrote that in the Lauh al Mahfuz, and what is in the Lauh al Mahfuz is divulged to the malaika on a yearly basis on Laylatul Qadr, on the Laylatul Qadr. So you see that the belief in the Qadr and the belief in the Malaika, there's some hikmah in the Shaykh Sa'adi rahimahullah ta'ala mentioning them together, right? That included in the belief in the messengers is the belief in the Malaika and the Qadr, he says. The belief in the Malaika and the belief in the Qadr. He says, وَمِنْهُمْ Also from the angels, مَلَائِكَةٌ سَيَّحُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَتَّبِعُونَ مَجَانِسَ الذِّكْرِ he said, likewise, there are angels. This comes in a hadith of Abu Hurair in the Sahihain that the Prophet وسلم, said, Inna lillahi tabarak wa ta'ala, malaikatan sayyara fudala yattabi'una majalis al dhikr. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has angels that are sayyara, and that travel through the earth. Right? Sayyara today means an automobile. The Sayyara, and they journey throughout the earth. Fudala, meaning they have no other job except what comes in this hadith. That they look for majalis of dhikr. They look for the sittings of dhikr, the sittings of knowledge. Wherever Allah is being mentioned and remembered, and His religion is being taught. Right? And they, and He, Say, Halumu ila buryatikum. And he come, we have found that which we are looking for. So they summon each other and they surround, as is found in the other hadith, right? And he that, whenever people gather together in the houses from the houses of Allah ta'ala to recite the Quran and study it amongst themselves, the 
Sakina comes, the Rahmah descends, and the angels surround them. Right? And Allah Taala mentions them with those that are with Him, Subhanahu wa Taala, meaning any those that are closest to Allah from the angels. So reported from some of the sound that they said that what is meant by majanis of dhikr, and the sittings of dhikr are the sittings of knowledge, and the malaika, and he descend upon the sittings of the people of Sunnah, the sittings of the people of Sunnah. As for the sittings of Ahlul Bir'a wa Dalana, people of innovation and misguidance, who have heretical beliefs, who mix poison with honey. And so they come with an ayat and they come with a hadith and then they come with some dalana. They come with some misguidance, and they come with some confusion. And he then who descends upon them? Is it the angels? Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala, he said, أَرَأَيْتَ عَلَى مَنْ تَنَزَّلَ شَيَاطِينَ تَنَزَّلُ عَلَى كُلِّ أَفَّاكٍ أَثِيمٍ Don't you see those that the shayateen descend upon? They descend upon every athak athim, every liar and every person who is athim, every person who is a transgressor and a wrongdoer, right? That's all these people who have introduced lies into the religion of Allah Taala and evil practices in the religion of Allah Taala. And after the disbelievers, they are entered into the meaning of that verse, min babi awla, and before anyone else. After the disbelievers, and they are the people of al ifq wal ithm, and those people who introduce evil beliefs and evil practices into the religion. Afanallahu wa yakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spares from innovation and his people. He says, وَمِنْ هُمْ خَزَنَةُ جَهَنَّمْ وَقَدْ أَشَارَ الْقُرْآنُ إِلَى هَذَا الصُّنْفِ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ بِقَوْلِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And he from the angels likewise are خَزَنَةُ جَهَنَّمْ And he the angels that are the gatekeepers of the paradise, or the hellfire rather, the gatekeepers of the hellfire. The Qur'an has indicated and pointed us towards the existence of this category of angels with the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمْ اُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمَ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُوا تَأْتِيكُمْ رُسُلُكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا بَنَا قَالُوا فَدْعُوا وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ 39 and, or 49 and 50 rather. And those who are in the fire, they will say to thee, Khazanat Jahannam. How many are there? How many angels are the gatekeepers of the hellfire? 19. 19, right? 19. And they will say to them, Summon your Lord, call upon your Lord, and ask Him to alleviate for us lesson. Yukhaffif, yani lesson enlighten, adab, some of the torment. 
قالوا ألم تكو تأتيكم رسولكم بالبينات قالوا بنا to which they will respond, did, did not the messengers come to you with bayinat, with clear evidences? Qalu bana. will say, of course they did. Qalu fadu'u. They will say, keep on calling. Keep on calling out. Wa ma du'a'un kafirina illa fi dhalal. The du'a of the kuffar is nothing but dhalal. It is nothing but misguidance. And he, as much as they call out, as much as they beg and plead, their du'a will never be answered by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. وَمِنْهُمْ خَزَنَةُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّذِينَ أَخْبَرَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ بِقَوْلِهِ Likewise, from the angels are the gatekeepers of the paradise whom Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala informed about when he said in Surah Al-Zumar وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا And he and those who had taqwa of their nurturing Lord will be led to the paradise, zumara in droves. They will be led in groups into the paradise. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he said in his book about the paradise, Hadi al-arwah ila bilal al-afrah, he said that just as they were in the dunya, Yadun bi yad, hand in hand, muta'awinun ala ta'atillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, cooperating upon obedience to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, that they will enter as communities, they will enter as groups of people that were cooperating with each other upon righteousness and piety to establish Allah's religion on the earth, then they will enter the paradise together. And he, as some narration said, that they will be interlaced, they will be interlocked. Right, they will be holding on to each other and they will all at the same moment enter the paradise. They will all at the same moment enter the paradise. So, and he, Allah wa ta'ala, he says, until they arrive at the paradise and its gates, وَفُتِحَتْ abwabuha, and its gates will be flung open. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ تُبْتُمْ فَدْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ and they will say, Salamun alaykum, peace be upon you. Salamun alaykum. It's a nakira. Yeah. Salamun alaykum. Tubutum. Salamun alaykum. Meaning, and a phenomenal, unimaginable peace be upon you. A degree of safety and peace beyond what you can begin to imagine. Every type of peace that you can imagine, may that be upon you. Tubutum. Yani, why? Tubutum. And because you are upon that which was tayyib, your aqidah, your intentions, your statements, your actions were tayyib, your spouses were tayyibin, your company were the tayyibin, you love that which is tayyib, and this is the home of the tayyibin, and this is the home of every place that is tayyib, tubatum, and you were pure. فَدْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ So enter it, the paradise, for eternity. وَمِنْهُمْ حَمَلَةُ الْعَرْشِ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ And he from the angels likewise are the carriers of the throne وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ And the angels that are closest to the throne of Allah تبارك وتعالى بَعْهُمْ Allah سبحانه وتعالى سر سرطي غافر الذين يحملون العرش ومن حوله يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويؤمنون به ويستغفرون للذين آمنوا ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمة وعلما فاغفر للذين تابوا وتبعوا سبيلك وقيهم عذاب الجحيم Those that carry the throne of Ar-Rahman who bear the throne of Ar-Rahman and those that are around it and how many angels carry the throne of Ar-Rahman ويحملوا عرش ربك uh, right? Eight. Some scholars they say, and it is four in the dunya, and on the day of judgment it will be eight. But that is just a statement right, that doesn't have something directly to the Prophet ﷺ. What is explicitly mentioned in the Quran is that there are eight angels that are the holders of the throne, the bearers of the throne of Allah Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is not in need of His throne or anything less than that of His creation, and He is the ruler 
of the entirety of his dominion, tabarak wa ta'ala. These angels, they bear the throne of ar-Rahman. They are enormous angels. And in some narrations, they say that if a bird was to fly from the uh, earlobe to the shoulder of one of these angels, it would take more than 500 years of journey. If a bird was to fly from the earlobe to the shoulder of one of these angels, it would take over 500 years of journey. And so these angels are beyond what you can begin to imagine, and yani in greatness, and so on and so forth. What Allah Tabarak wa Taala has created in this universe, and He is tremendous. And he, the fact that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala cares for His creation, and watches His creation, and safeguards His creation, and responds to His creation, us, little tiny itty bitty human beings, right, on this little tiny planet floating in the middle of this vast universe. It's something that is tremendous. It's something that is tremendous. What Allah wa ta'ala has created is far greater than us. It's far greater than us, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He has ordered these angels to do, as is mentioned in the verse, and that they glorify, because the angels only do what Allah has ordered them to do, and they glorify and they praise Allah, they believe in Allah, and they make istighfar, they ask Allah to forgive those who believe, O oh, our Lord, you have encompassed all things in knowledge and mercy. So forgive those who repent and who follow your way. وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ Protect them from the torment of Jahim. رَبَّنَا وَأَدْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِ نِلَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ O oh, our Lord, enter them into the gardens of Adin, meaning the gardens of eternality, the gardens that are eternal. الَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ that you have promised them. وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِيَّاتِهِمْ Enter them as well as those that are righteous from their, from their forefathers and ancestors and spouses and their ذُرِيَّات and their offspring. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, you, O Allah, alone are Azizun Hakim. You are the one who is almighty, all wise. And in that statement, إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ Whenever you see any, an extra dhamir that is unnecessary any, for the meaning to be established in and of itself, that the extra dhamir has the meaning of hasr. It has the meaning of hasr. Ula'ika hum. Ula'ika hum al fasikun. Ula'ika hum such and such, right? Allahu huwa such and such, right? Innaka anta. It has a meaning of hasr, meaning that you alone, right? You alone, Allah alone is al azizul hakim. Waqihim sayyat and protect them from as sayyat from evil deeds. Wa man taqi sayyat yom aidin fakar rahimta. And whoever you protect from sayyat from evil deeds on that day, fakar rahimta, then you will have shown him mercy. وَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And that is a tremendous success. وَمِنْهُمْ مَلَائِكَةُ صُفُوفُ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ Or you could say, لَا, يفتر, لا يَفْتُرُونَ Or you could say, لَا يَفْتِرُونَ يَفْتِرُ and يَفْتُر Are both correct to say. And he, they are malaika, sufuf, and he, that are in rows, lined up in ranks. And he, لا يَفْتُرُونَ And he, one upon another after another, Glorifying and praising Allah and making ruku and sujood in the heavens, right? That are lined up in rows, as the Prophet wasallam said occasionally when straightening the rows, right? Wouldn't you like to line up as the angels line up in front of their Lord, tabarak wa ta'ala? Wouldn't you like to line up as the angels line up in front of their Lord, tabarak wa ta'ala? And so the angels... As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said in a hadith found in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed where he said لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا عَلَمْ لَذَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا He said that if you knew what I knew you would laugh very little and you would weep very much. He said أَقْفَتِ السَّمَاءُ وَحُقَّ لَهَا أَن تَئِطْ مَا فِيهَا مَوْضِعُ أَرْبَعِ أَصَابِعَ إِلَّا وَمَلَكٌ وَاضِعٌ جَبْحَتْهُ سَاجِدًا لِلَّهِ تَبَارَكُ تَعَالَى That the sky moans 
and it has the right to moan, because there is not the distance of four fingers in the sky, except that in that space there is an angel with his forehead down, making sajda for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. I mean, the sky groans from the weight of the angels in it. The sky groans from the weight of the angels in it. So the Prophet Sallallahu he said that if you knew what I knew, that you would laugh very little and you would weep very much. وَقُسَارَ al-Qawl. He says, and in summary, فَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ الْكِرَامِ مِنْ مَخْلُقَاتِ اللَّهِ الْعِظَامِ الَّتِي لَا يُحْصَى عَدَدُهَا وَلَا يُحِيطُ بِأَوْصَافِهَا إِلَّا خَارِقُهَا الَّذِي قَالَ عَنْهَا وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّهُ The malaika, the noble angels, are from the tremendous creations of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala whose angels are innumerable, beyond what is able to be counted. وَلَا يُحِيطُ بِأَوْصَافِهَا إِلَّا خَالِقُهَا And no one has full knowledge of the attributes of the angels except for their creator, who said about them, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّهُ None know the army of your Lord, save he. None know the army of your Lord, save he. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَ جَاعِلِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُولًا أُولِي أَجْنِحَةِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَاعَ يَزِيدُ فِي الْخَلْقِ مَا يَشَاءِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ, إن الله عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ And he, that he made the angels رُسُولًا And he has messengers to carry out his commands. They are possessors of wings, and he two or three or four. And he, these are the sets of wings of the malaika, and he, they have wings, they may have two or three or four. يَزِيدُ فِي الْخَلْقِ مَا يَشَاءُ Or more than that. We said yesterday the Prophet wasallam. this comes in the Sunnah authentically, he saw the angel Jibreel in his form that he was created in twice. And he had how many wings that extended to the ends of the horizon? 600, right? 600 wings that extended to the ends of the horizons, right? وفي هذا المعنى ما رواه مسلم عن مالك بن صعصع في حديث الإسراء ثم رفع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى البيت المعمور فقال فقلت يا جبريل ما هذا قال هذا البيت المعمور يدخله كل يوم سبعون ألف ملك إذا خرجوا منه لم يعودوا فيه آخر, آخر ما عليهم لم يعود فيه آخر ما عليهم. He says in a hadith collected by Bukhari and Muslim in the Sahih, the hadith of Malik ibn Sa'a, that when the Prophet وسلم, he said that he was raised up to the Bayt al Ma'amur. The Bayt al Ma'amur is in the heaven above the earth, and he above the dunya, right? In the heaven above the dunya, every day he said 70,000 angels enter it. Never to return back to it until the end of time. Never to return back to it up until the end of time. So if there are 70,000 new angels every day that enter it and that will never enter, that will never uh, re-enter it, right? That means that every day there are 70,000 different angels. So from the beginning of time to now, and you think about the number of malaika, the number of malaika, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, يُؤْتَى بِجَهَنَّمَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ مَعَ كُلِّ زِمَامٍ مِنْهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ مَلَكٍ يَجُرُّونَهَا That the day of judgment will be brought, or that on the day of judgment, the hellfire will be brought, being pulled by 70,000 chains. Every chain will have 70,000 angels pulling it. Right? Pulling it. So 70,000 times 70,000 is? A big number. <laughs> 70,000 times 70,000 is 49 with eight zeros behind it. How much is that? Come on, man. You know, put your phone away. <laughs> so some of our children was here, they would tell us about ourselves, right? Huh? Four billion, nine hundred million. Four billion, nine hundred million, right? So, 
And the junood of Allah Taala is beyond what you can imagine. As Shaykh Uthaymeen mentions throughout his tafsir, that the jinn far outnumber the number of human beings, and the angels far outnumber the number of jinn. Ya ma'ashar al-jinn qad astakthartu min al-ins. Allah Taala He mentioned in the Quran, and the Day of Judgment will be say, "O oh, ma'ashar al-jinn, you have far exceeded yani, mankind," meaning a number. Meaning a number and also an evil, right? You have far exceeded them. You have far exceeded them. So the jinn, they are more than human beings, and the angels are more than the jinn. And no one knows the army of Allah Taala except for He, Subhanahu wa Taala. He said, "وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ مِنَ النُّصُوصِ الَّتِي تَدُلُّ عَلَى كَثْرَتِهِمْ كَثِيرٌ هَذَا وَمِمَا يَنْبَغِي الْإِشَارَةُ إلَيْهِ أَنَّ الْإِيمَانَ بِهِ يَتَذَمَّنُ أُمُورًا مِنْهَا." He said, "To other than that." Of the many, many texts that mention the Malaika, he says, and believing in them consists of a number of affairs, and we'll quickly mention them. The first is to believe in their existence. When in lam nushahidhum, even though we cannot see them, because they are an unseen creature, or unseen species of creation from the ghayb, and from the realm of the unseen, waqad wasaf Allah muttaqin annahum yu'minuna bil ghayb. And Allah has described the believers as those who believe in the unseen, as is found in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. The Sheikh says. The second thing he said: "At Tasdiq will be man alim nismahu kajibril wa Mikael wa Israfil." He said to believe in those whose names we know from amongst them, like Mikael, like Jibrail, and Mikael and Israfil, and their names. And he were mentioned in the du'a of al-istiftah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sometimes in opening the salah, he would say, "Allahumma Rabba Jibrila wa Mikaila wa Israfila, Fatir al-Samawati wal Ard, Alim al-Ghayb wa Shahada, Anta Tahkumu bain al-Ibadi kafi ma kanu fihi yaktalifun." To the end of the du'a, O oh Allah, Lord of Jibril, Mikaila, and Israfil. Originator of the heavens and the earth, the knower of the realm of the seen and the unseen, you alone will judge between your slaves pertaining that which they differ. Guide us to that which they differed about pertaining the truth by your permission. Indeed, you guide whom you will to the straight path. Thirdly, believing in those men alimna bima alimna min sifatihim al khalqiyah kama. جاء ذلك في صريح القرآن وصحيح السنة إجمالا وتفصيلا. And believing in their qualities, their physical qualities that Allah has described them with in the Quran and that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم described them with. And either general qualities that they are created of light, that they have wings and so on and so forth. And any the qualities that are beyond that. Thirdly, الإيمان بما To believe in that which has reached us of their actions, and to believe, and in the task that they are responsible for doing, and as we mentioned in this class and in the last class, and you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has kallafahum bil qiyami biha, and He has made them responsible for undertaking, and He like the nabat and the matar, and the sending of revelation, and the bringing of the revelation, and the rain water, and the blowing of the horn, and the Taking of the soul and the uh, bringing of the soul to the womb of the mother, and he, and the writing of what happens, and he, after the uh, third period of forty days, to the end of those descriptions of the tasks that they are carried out, that they carry out. He says, and there are a number of benefits that we get from this belief, and he mentions three. He said the first. And he is that knowing about the angels in detail provides us with further knowledge of the greatness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His strength and His execution of His authority. Tabarak Wa Taala, and as much as that He has created the species that human kind cannot begin to fathom the greatness of. The second. It is mandatory to be grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and He who has entrusted 
the general and the specific tarbiyah and care of his creation to some of these malaika and to these angels in different ways. And they safeguard and protect us. And they safeguard the record of our deeds and so on and so forth. And all of these sorts of things. And they should cause us to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, Inna lil malaki lamma, what is shaytani lamma? That the malak that is with the person, as comes in the hadith of Mas'ud in Sahih Muslim, and that there is not a single person from Makhshu except that he has appointed to him a qareen from the jinn and a qareen from the malaika. Right? We know the hadith of Aisha, right, where the Prophet I mentioned that every person has a qareen from the jinn. She said, Even you, O Messenger of Allah, he said, Even I, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has aided me against him and he has accepted Islam, right? and he has submitted. And he has submitted me and he has, accepted, he has entered into Islam. Right? Another hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, he said, and a qareen from the malaika. And a qareen that is always with her from the malaika. So Ibn Mas'ud, he said, another hadith that is mawquf. And Ibn Mas'ud has a ruling of being from the Prophet wasallam, because Shaykh al-Abani said it is something that cannot be said by human opinion. Inna lil-malaki lamma wa shaytani lamma. That the malak has a lamma, meaning a position of closeness to the human being from which it can influence the human being. There is an angel and there is a shaitan. Both of them have a position of closeness from which they can influence the human being. فَلَمَّةُ الْمَلَكِ إِعَادٌ بِالْخَيْرِ وَتَصْدِيقٌ بِالْحَقِّ The lemma of the malak, what he does from his qurb, from his position of closeness and having an influence upon the human being is uh, that he causes him إِعَادٌ بِالْخَيْرِ He encourages him with the good he reminds him of the promise of Allah wa Taala, and he wa tasdiqun bil haq, and he pushes the human being to believe in the truth. And the shaitan does the opposite of that. Fa iadun bil shar, wa takdibun bil haq. The shaitan does the opposite. He threatens the person with evil. That if you obey Allah and if you're a good Muslim and so on and so forth, that it's going to take you, it's going to cause you to take losses. It's going to be inconvenient and difficult for you, and so on and so forth. It would be better for you to. Uh, uh, be weak in your religion, these sorts of things. يعادون بشر And a person goes to spend their wealth, a person goes to do anything, and the shaitan waits in ambush for the person to slow him down, to make tathbeet, and to slow him down from the good. وَتَكْذِيبٌ بالحق And he had to try to encourage him to uh, reject the truth. So we should be grateful. And that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has and he appointed these angels to us that undertake affairs that are directly connected to our personal care and our tarbiyah, our nurturing and our, and our uh, upbringing and our raising. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected everything in the heavens and the earth for mankind, included in that is the angels, included in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, subjecting the heavens and the earth to our use. As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala appointing the angels to these wabaif, the shaykh says, these important tasks and jobs. And the last thing he says here, وجوب محبة الملائكة إذ هم أنصح المخلوقات لعباد الله المؤمنين That it is mandatory to love the angels. It is mandatory to love the angels. And as much as that they are the most genuine of creatures towards Allah's believing servants. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and he mentions again the verse that we heard today and yesterday from Surah Al-Ghafir about the angels who carry the throne of Ar-Rahman tabarak wa ta'ala making dua for the believers and asking Allah to forgive them and enter them into the paradise and to reunite them with their families. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and he, to provide us with love of him and love of those that he loves and love of actions that will lead us to that which he loves. Hadhu wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala